since the motion control system and when the industrial robot often relies on models, there is a great interest in finding highly accurate models that are suitable for control purposes. Suitable in this context means that the model should be as simple as possible by closely matching the dynamic behavior of the real robot. In this research project, we use system identification for finding the model parameters from a combination of pre-known data and experimentally gained data. The model structure will mostly be predefined, but the efficiency of finding uh, such a model is also of high importance. Identification of industrial robots is in general a challenging task. A closed loop system must be identified and several nonlinearities are present. Nonlinearities are, for example, related to friction in the joints of the robot or they occur due to the specific behavior of the gearboxes. One approach for identifying a robot model was developed by Eric Van Oldt and Steve Mobeck some years ago, and it is a gray box frequency domain method, which first estimates non parametric frequency response functions, FRFs, in a number of different robot positions, and then fits a parametric robot model to the measurements by minimizing the error between the FRFs. This method allows the identification of quite accurate robot models, actually, and validation experiments both in time and frequency domain showed convincing agreements of identified model and real manipulator. So while continuing research in this application, if it already works, what is the motivation for this project? Trying to identify an accurate robot model by using experimental data requires a well-chosen experiment design, um, both targeting short experiment times and a suitable excitation amplitude. Currently, long experiment times of three to four hours are required for estimating the non parametric frequency response functions of the robot systems in several positions, and this makes an identification for each robot individual costly and one might identify only one model for one whole robot series, for example. Another main issue in the experiment design is the choice of the excitation amplitudes. For a high model accuracy, large excitation amplitudes are desired, but this involves the risk of wear or damage of the robot or some of its components during the experiments. Finally, we want to maintain or improve the quality of the identified model, of course. So, uh, in the scope of this research project, we want to uh, therefore reduce the experiment time, reduce the risk of damage, and increase the model accuracy. My research at LEU started only six weeks ago, so I do not have results to present today, but I collected several questions and topics which would be worth to investigate. I will, for example, investigate the question of, an, of the optimal number of spring damper pairs in the robot model, that means of degrees of freedom, and closely related to that is the question of identifiability of the different parameters. Are there, for example, certain parameters that turn out to not be needed in an, for an accurate model, or how many parameters are we actually able to properly identify? Another topic related to the model structure is some more detailed modeling of components in the system, such as gears and motors. And uh, one could also think of including flexible link components into the model, which would closely relate to the work of my master thesis about flexible multibody modeling. I already mentioned some issues related to the experimental design when it comes to the excitation and the estimation of the non parametric frequency response functions. And the type and the shape of the excitation signal is certainly of high interest, but also questions about the optimal robot positions for the experiments or the impact of a mounted uh, payload error to investigate. Another idea for improving the current identification method is to add one or several additional sensors for gaining additional measurement data that can be used in an identification process. For example, mounting an uh, IMU at the tool or accelerometers onto the structure um, are two possibilities here. 
Finally, um, it would be worth to investigate a completely different system identification approach, for example, a time, time domain method, and then validate and judge the model accuracy and the process efficiency. So I have enough questions to start my research with, and I'm looking forward to searching for the answers and to presenting some results hopefully soon. Thanks for listening and see you at the workshop.